dived into it, dove into it. I don't know. Grammar is a colonial concept. So. Hola y'all, welcome back to my channel. So, uh, this is Shelly Flowers Reads and Writes. I'm Michelle Flores, where I talk about all things related to reading and writing. Today, I wanted to do a different kind of video because I realized making my indie bookstore haul that I was not staying true to the things that I have been talking about in some of my videos. I also noticed that I haven't been writing because of everything that's been going on in the world. So I, I am just thinking a lot about, you know, saying things, putting things out there into the world and then not following through on them and how harmful that can actually be. Um, not even to other people, but more to myself because I am someone who likes to stay true to my word and make sure that my word actually means something. So to that effect, um, this video is going to be basically where I talk about all of the books that are still on my TBR shelf that have been on my TBR shelf for years, some of them close to a decade, and I have not even considered reading. Um, because that is a problem and I don't I don't want to, you know, own books that I'm not actually reading. I want to make sure that all the books that I own are books that I truly, truly love. So first thing I'm going to start with are these books here. I talked about this in my indie bookstore haul on Wednesday. So if you want to learn more about these books and why I picked them, you can check out that video. I've got it linked in the cards above. I also have some of these books here. So these two books are the ones that I am currently reading at the time of this recording. I have The Mists of Avalon and then I also have this book of poetry called Un Poeta Inolvidable. Sorry, that word's kind of hard for me. Um, uh, these two books I talked about in my June TBR, so I'll link that above as well. And then I have some books that I still need to read for the Read Caribbean readathon so those are next on my list like I have all these books that I just bought and then I still have this entire shelf of my TBR books so I wanted to go through some of them and just talk about what might be holding me back in terms of actually reading some of these books all right let's get started so these two books here I picked up at a teacher workshop with facing history facing ourselves that is an excellent organization that focuses a lot on using different genocides that have happened around the world as a way to teach about history. And they do it in a way of like teaching these genocides as an example of human behavior. So with this book, I actually got to meet a liberator from one of the concentration camps during World War II and a Holocaust survivor at the same time. It was by far one of the most powerful experiences that I've ever had and has truly shaped the way that I view my work as an educator. This person, Dr. Leon Bass, went to Europe to free people from concentration camps and then came back to the US and had to survive the Jim Crow South. It's just mind blowing. And it is a good reminder to me that so many Americans don't actually know the truth of our history. We like to think that America is the land of the free and everybody has a place here, but that has not been our history for the longest time. And I think all of the events that we see happening right now are an example of that coming true. So these books, I definitely need to start reading them. You know, I'm thinking especially in August as I go through my teacher prep for the year. These are books that I, I really want to make sure that I, I get to this year, especially. Okay, next up, we have two more like teacher kind of workbooks. And these are Champs and The Skillful Teacher. So Champs for teachers who don't know or for anybody who doesn't know, Champs is just like a method of basically giving kids really clear and concise directions on how they should be acting, working, behaving in your class. So it, the CHAMPS actually stands for conversation, help, assignment, so what the assignment actually is, uh, movement, where the kids can and can't go in the class, and then participation. What does their work actually look like? Some people use the S, which stands for success. This book called The Skillful Teacher is basically just like a brain dump of all kinds of different teaching moves. I would liken it to the Teach Like a Champion books. So if you're into that kind of stuff, this is like teach like a champion times 10 it it is a book that i've been going through over the years um and it just has all kinds of different things like it'll talk about discipline it also has stuff about 
class expectations, principles of learning, being clear in the directions you're giving. So both of these are books that I should be finishing at some point. These next three books. I think this first one here is an ARC or I don't know. This I got in grad school. One of the professors, uh, David Lipsky, was just passing out his book. I guess he had a bunch of extra free copies that he wanted to give to us. So he gave this and I have just never read it and I've had it since grad school. So this has definitely been on my shelf for 10 years. Then we have Cold Mountain. This was a really big movie back in the day. Not as much anymore. I don't really hear people talking about it. I don't know if I would like it, which is why I think I haven't picked it up yet. Um, I was part of this group called SwapTree.com where you could just mail things to people and they would give you stuff and you would get like you would send out your old things that you didn't want like DVDs, CDs, books, all kinds of stuff like that and then you would get something in return and that's how I got this book. Same thing with this book here, Jonathan Franzen, The Corrections. I, some of these books that I picked, I think I picked them because I saw them on these like top 10 books you must read in 2010 or 2011 kind of thing. And looking back on it, like I don't really like a lot of popular books unless it's YA. So I probably shouldn't have done that. But it is what it is. I have them on my shelf now. So same thing here with The English Patient. Same kind of situation going on. This book I definitely need to read. I have tried reading in the past, but I don't think I've ever been in the right mindset for it. Octavia Butler's Seed to Harvest. And I believe this is actually four books that have been put together in one. Yeah, so in this case, it is the Patternist series and it's all four books from that series put into one book. Then you have The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. I don't know how I got this book. I teach middle school, so I should probably read it so I can share it with my kids. Anyway, here we have The Energy Bus. I think this might be one of my husband's books in terms of like, I don't know, one of those like leadership kind of books. And then this one, Famous Poets for Young People. I don't know how I got this book either, but I should read it because I love poetry. But some of the people that are here are like, this is not what I would be reading to my kids right now. Like William Blake, Lewis Carroll, Robert Louis Stevenson. I don't know. This doesn't, maybe for young people at the time that this was written, but I don't think this would be great for kids right now. Yeah, this was in the 60s. So, oh my gosh. This, one of my old bosses gave me, Miami Transformed, all about the city of Miami. I think I have been holding off on this book because one, it's but there's a foreword by Michael Bloomberg. I have feelings about Michael Bloomberg. Um, two, Miami is a city that still faces a lot of really big issues. Gentrification has been a huge problem in the city. Um, the Wynwood District has been really famous because it has all these cool like art murals and cute little bars and stuff but it has basically gentrified Overtown which was I think one of the first black owned cities in Florida if not the first probably like definitely one of the first so I'm, I've am i been giving this book the big side eye for a while but I also know that I need to get more into nonfiction especially nonfiction relating to politics and um, economics so even if I disagree with a lot of what this book says it at least helps me understand different people's mindsets you see my problem I like don't want to throw away stuff because I can find the good in everything it's it's a gift and a curse next we have sea spell which I am actually planning on reading for the mermaid readathon it is the fourth book in the Waterfire saga I really like the saga I have issues with the representation in it but overall the story is really fun adventure and I'm always down for mermaids having a fun adventure. Then we have this graphic organizer of four, Fahrenheit 451. Again, another one of those books. I'm not sure how I got it, but I ended up with it. And I like Fahrenheit 451. I like graphic novels. I've never gotten around to reading this. Don't know why. I probably will at some point. I keep saying that. This book I won in a professional development that was super boring and she knew that her course was boring because it was all about like random certification stuff. So she was like, if you pay attention by the end of this, you'll get a prize. And I got this as a prize. 
a boring book that I have no interest in reading. This is definitely one of my husband's books, like best of helpful hints. I don't even know. I guess just random stuff to help you out, like with doing stuff around the house. Then we have Stalin. So ooh, like four years ago now, I taught seventh grade language arts. And one of the books we had to read was um, Animal Farm. And in order to understand Animal Farm, you got to know who Stalin is. So the curriculum I had was a prescribed curriculum. It came with a bunch of books. They actually took this out. And I think that was a mistake. I think this would have been helpful because... A lot of kids who read Animal Farm got the ideas of communism and stuff, but I don't think they understood what happens when uh, this stuff plays out in reality. I think, again, it just goes to show, I personally believe history is something that the U.S. does a terrible job of teaching people for reasons, because heaven forbid we have nuance in our thinking and go beyond just traditional party lines and actually start to study things deeply so that you know that's where i stand with that and we have this book here f my life this is definitely my husband's book it's one of those um silly jokey kind of books i will probably never read this but i don't like to get rid of my husband's books without him having some input on it this book I bought in a, I didn't even buy this actually. This book I got from a professional development about restorative justice. So I actually went to the Restorative Justice Institute in Allentown, Pennsylvania, um, and I did a whole weekend workshop on it. I am 100% one of those people who was old school. If you do something wrong, you need a consequence and you have to, you know, have some type of punishment for it. And going to that workshop really opened my eyes and understanding that punishment is not necessarily what is going to move the needle in terms of helping kids develop socially and emotionally. Um, I also feel like with all of these conversations of defunding the police and, you know, what does it mean to operate in a world without prisons, restorative justice is part of that. And it, it took me a minute to make that connection, but that's kind of where I see it. Do I think our society is ready to completely abolish these types of systems? In some ways, yes, and in some ways, no. Do I think the systems have to change? Absolutely. I think right now our systems are completely corrupt and unjust. And if you don't think that, you clearly have never experienced the brunt end of that in the way that you know, so many black and brown people in this country have. So I don't know, food for thought. If you're a teacher who's looking to understand restorative justice, this is a great book. There's a couple other ones here that I have as well. Okay, next we have The Celtic Twilight by Yates. I think I got this book in this dorm, this women's dorm I used to live in in New York City back when I was, you know, all of 21 years old and trying to make it in New York City while my mother was diagnosed with cancer and it was just a very stressful time in my life. Um, but they had this free lending library and you could just take books and leave books and that's what I did and I picked up this book and I still haven't read it because classic poetry scares me a little bit. And so it looks like this is a combination of poetry and maybe essays or short stories. So I should, I think I would actually really enjoy this now. I think I might be at the age where I'm ready to read it and hopefully in the next few months I can do that. Then there's this magazine. My husband loves this magazine. He won't let me get rid of it. It's called Mobsters and Gangsters. I will never read it, but I don't know where to put it. So that's my issue, my cross to bear. Okay, next up we have Tar Baby by Toni Morrison. Um, Toni Morrison is by far one of my favorite authors. She was the first author to really, like, on a craft level, blow my mind. I remember reading Beloved in high school and just thinking, like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is allowed? People are allowed to do this? Um, I had just never read anything like what she had written before. And I've had this book on my shelf for years, and I've just never gotten around to it. Um, because I know her work is very emotionally intense. So I've... I've I've had a very stressful few years and I'm hoping now as I see myself like 
coming out of that sort of more depressive state, I can I can give this book some of the time that it deserves. Okay, next up we have Sense and Nonsense about drugs and crime, or about crime and drugs. So this is a policy guide, and I, again, another one of those books, I have no idea how I got it. This might actually be my husband's mother's book that somehow ended up in my car, but I do think this is a really interesting topic, especially now when we talk about what it means to defund the police. We also need to be asking questions like, what does it mean to commit a crime? And who is being held accountable for crimes? Who is not being held accountable for crimes? These are all questions we need to be asking ourselves. Next up, we have Redwall, a graphic novel. I loved the Redwall series growing up. I probably had like 10 of the books. And then once I got to like senior year of high school, I stopped reading it. But I think this series is so cute and it's basically just like watership down, you know, a bunch of animals like rabbits and no, what is it, moles and skunks and all kinds of stuff like that, uh, you know, in like a medieval setting and they drink. I remember elderberry wine being very important. Um, the stories got very repetitive in the book, but this graphic novel seems really cute and I should read it. There's no reason not to. I think a friend of mine lent it to me and then I just never gave it back because I'm a trash person. I'm a terrible trash person. That's what it is. Next up we have White Fang. I taught Call of the Wild a few years ago um, with that same curriculum I was talking about before. White Fang was part of that curriculum. Not a big fan of the Call of the Wild. Not a big fan of reading about old men and their dogs. Just not my genre. But most guys I know really love that genre. Like my husband loved Call of the Wild. So this might be a book that I keep for him in case he wants to read it. Next up we have the Elixir Vitae Adventures Ordus Book One by Stacey Horan. She is a local author. I got this in 2018 at the Jacksonville Book Festival, which is this really cute festival we have here in Jacksonville every year in the downtown library. Um, it's signed and everything. It sounded like a cute idea for a story and then I just never got around to reading it. So I'm looking at this pile of 10 books I have next to me and if I pull the same shit, I'm gonna be pissed at myself. <laughs> so now we have this last stack here. This is working together. This is all about the Myers-Briggs personality types and how they can work together. All right, next up, start with why. This is a classic like leadership kind of book. Okay, next up is B Season by My Myla Goldberg. This is another one of those books that got turned into movies. Then we have Thinking. I think this was my husband's book and I don't think he actually liked it, but I haven't read it. So I figure I should keep it so I can judge it and hate it for my own sake. Then we have the big black book of secrets. Um, it's not very big. We have Emotional Intelligence 2.0. This is a growth area for me. As an INTJ, I kind of struggle with understanding other people's emotions. Okay, next up we have The Lost Art of Reading Nature Signs. My best friend actually bought this for me for Mother's Day. So I'm hoping, I don't know, I, I know that when I read this book, I'm gonna wanna be in like an outdoor camping kind of setting. I don't know when I'll be able to camp again, but I think what I need to do is like, take a day where I can just go outside and sit under a tree and read this for a few hours because it's very much about like how to understand wind and you know flowers and and that kind of thing so really different from the kind of stuff I normally read but I also think it's a very cute book then we have this another poetry book this is an anthology of imagerists poetry which um basically was a poetic movement in 20th century England. Um, so reading the description here, it seems like it's mostly about being precise and concise in your language. That this is coming out of the romantic period where it was all about like how flowery and complex can you make your sentences. And so this is a reaction to that of like pulling back and, and narrowing things down. I wanna say it also heavily influenced free verse style of poetry. 
Um, I could be wrong about that though. Then we have this book, Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. I have a hard time with these very new agey kind of books and these pages are all crooked. I am very sad about that. Um, I have a really hard time with these kinds of books because it all just feels like bullshit. Um, I think part of this is also my own hang up with any kind of organized religion or spirituality. Uh, as a reformed church kid, I have a lot of trauma when it comes to that. So uh, I might actually need to check this out. I don't know. All right, next up we have African poetry. I have no idea why I haven't read this book. I should. It seems really interesting. Um, I love poetry. It looks like I bought it at an old like library sale or something because it's got this weird plastic covering that library books have. But I just have not gotten into it. Then we have What a Coach Can Teach a Teacher. I actually really love this book and I love the guy who wrote this, Jeff Duncan Andrade. He is in, I think he is Mexican American and he's one of the like leading people in education who he had an essay that came out a few years ago called The Audacity of Hope. He is really big on working with inner city, urban, at risk, all of these labels we put for black and brown kids. Um, and he is really big on meeting kids where they are, not just forcing them to rise up to the levels and expectations that we have for them as educators. Next up we have the science class you wish you had. I don't know how I got this book. I am not a science teacher. I, maybe it was like in a classroom of mine and I meant to give it to a friend, I don't know. I might actually save this and give this to one of my really good teacher friends. She teaches science. Um, for some reason, I tend to make friends more easily with science and math teachers than with other English teachers. All right, and then next up we have probably the greatest book in my collection and I just have never gotten around to it because I'm disrespectful. That is King of Cool, Will Smith. Here are a couple more books I almost forgot. So I have Contact by Carl Sagan. I love this movie. I got this book thinking I would read it. And here we are almost 15 years later, still haven't read this book. Then we have Charm School by Nelson DeMille. I have zero interest in this, I might. I think I'm still gonna try and read it, but then if I don't like it within the first like 50 pages, I'm just gonna DNF it and unhaul it. I normally don't do that, but I have no idea why I have this book. So, that is it. Look at all these books. This is insane. This is just a big old pile of bullshit, I think. And <laughs> I, I need to be better about sticking to my word and shopping my shelves. So definitely for at least June and July, I am not buying any more books. Um, I need to start making a dent into this. I will say I have unhauled, I think close to 20 books so far this year. So even though I have all of these books here, I'm also like getting rid of books in the process. And I guess that means something, I don't know. I could also just be full of shit. <laughs> so anyway. That's all from me today. What is the most embarrassing book you still have on your TBR shelf that you have not read yet? Um, I definitely feel like this one has gotta be it for me. This is like, why? I release videos every Wednesday and Sunday, sometimes Fridays. If you'd like to buy a chapbook of poetry all about growing up in South Florida, you can do so here. Um, and that is it from me this week. Don't forget, I still have links for petitions, donations, um, black businesses that you can support, all linked down below. So make sure that you are doing that. And ciao, y'all.